Okay, so now we're going to get into coding just a little bit to show you how you can um, trigger this. We have our particle burst effect. If you click this, you could you could do other things. You could keep tweaking it. You could like I you know I had that ring effect in that other example I showed you. You you could customize this even further. But I'm just trying to keep this really simple and reusable. So these are the basics. But how do we make this happen in game? I would say there's three schools of thought on this on like approaches to doing this. One is you could have, like, let's say you have your player. And I'm probably going to use this method for now. Um, let's say you had your player. I'm just going to zero this out. Let's say you had a death explosion effect. You could take your particle effect and you could have this as a child object of your player. So then you're moving your player around, right? You're going, you're going around and you, you pick up something. You pick up a coin or you, you run out of health and die. Then you could have a script here look for an object that's part of this player. So we'll look for and find a particle burst and then tell it to play. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm not creating or destroying anything at runtime, right? That's the, that's the first way to think about it. The downside is that you have to do more setup on the prefab and do the connections here, but I, I think this is my preferred method. The second way you could do this is, uh, I'm gonna drag this out here. I could make this a prefab, and I actually do want to do this. So I'm going to I'm going to take this VFX particle thing, I drag this down into my assets. Now you'll see this is our definition. This is our shader, right? If we double, if we open this again, we can come back and we can make some changes, right? Like let's say when I'm change the color defaults or whatever, we do that, and then we could save it. This is this prefab is just a definition of a game object that just has our visual effect attached to it. So for example, we could make a new one. Uh, we could do create empty VFX example, whatever, it doesn't matter. If I were to drag this, this shader definition right here, this VFX onto it, it, it would add this as a component. So this is really just a component that, that we're doing, this definition here. Um, we could have multiple different prefabs of different setups with different, you know, like this one's blue, this one's green, this one's whatever. Uh, we could do that. So this is just one example of a game object using this VFX shader graph. So we could actually have multiples of these if we want, right? Like I could drag down my example and this is a new one. This is a death particle. This is a pickup particle, whatever. I'm going to delete that out. Just show you this is really modular. Even delete the prefab for our VFX example. What's important is that we keep our definition here. We keep our VFX graph as an asset. And then we can make as many different prefabs as we want. In this case, I'm just making a generic particle burst. So I will, you know, maybe we want to, uh, we want a designer to be able to duplicate this and make their own versions of it. So let me drag this down. Uh, you'll see that this is our, this is already synced to that other prefab. Doesn't matter, right? Well, we, we can make new ones. So I'm gonna make an original prefab. So now we have two, right? Like this is our, our one. If this is confusing, like the more you understand prefabs, the more you wanna feel comfortable with this. Otherwise you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna say, well, this is a prefab of that, but I you know, renamed it here and like whatever. So let's say that you got mixed up and we're just gonna delete all of this out, right? Delete out of my scene. Ooh, I'm gonna delete my two prefabs too, even scarier. We still have our definition if I just, drag this into my scene, this is a shortcut for making a new copy of, of this, right? Just drag it into the scene. And you'll see we already had one. Um, all that's important is that you have a game object with this VFX graph attached to it as a component. So you'll have something like this, okay? So that's where we'll start. Okay, so where was I going with this? The second option of how to trigger a particle effect at runtime is that you could make this prefab, which I'll drag and drop, you can make this prefab instead of this existing in the scene. So if I uh, click this, or let's say I save my scene, delete it out. Instead of it existing in the scene, I'm just gonna spawn one at runtime, it'll play, and then I can delete it, right? I just simulated what I would do through code. So that's one way you could do it. The downside is we would need to determine what to spawn. So we'd need a reference to the prefab to spawn. And we would need to determine like, when do we destroy it? How long until we destroy it? So we need to do it that way. Now the third option you have is a variation on the second option where instead of 
creating and destroying, we're using something called object pooling, which um, we're just requesting a list of, uh, let's say if we had like old object, and we had lots of particle bursts in here, lots of copies of it, right? All of these just already exist. And we could request an already existing particle effect, trigger it, so, so all these would be disabled, right? We could request a particle burst, we'd get it through code. We would trigger it, disable it, put it back in the pool. We would do all that through code. And that is the, an example of object pooling. And um, it's the most complex way to do it, but it's also the most optimized because we're not creating and destroying lots of things at runtime uh, and creating lots of garbage. We, this just already exists, right? We create these on start. And then when we need something, we request it, activate it, deactivate it, put it back. Nothing, well, oh, I'd do that right. Uh, nothing new was created or destroyed. We were just enabling, disabling, which is very cheap. So that's object pooling, for example. We're gonna go with the first method, which is that we have our player, actually let's call this exploder, it doesn't matter, a thing, that triggers our burst effect. Just think of it that way. In order to trigger this in code, you're going to want a script. So let's make a new script. Uh, we'll just do game object trip script. I'm just gonna call this exploder. Wait for that to update. Okay, so make sure that you attach your script and inside of my script, double click, start thinking about what you want to do. Like, what do I want the script to functionally do? Well. I need to get my VFX particle instance, tell it to play, and then do whatever after that. In this case, we just wanna get the instance and tell it to play. You can delete all this default stuff. There's a few little weird things here when it comes to um, getting your particle effect. Uh, first of all, you want to get your object in the scene. So we're, remember, we're doing option one, which is make this a child object. It's an instance of our prefab. We're gonna make that a child object. We're going to reference this child object through code and we'll tell it to play. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is if I put this in the scene and I hit play, you'll see how that plays on start. You're not actually gonna see a activate on start button uh, like the old system. What you're gonna see is this initial event name. We're telling this to call on play whenever it initializes. If you don't want that to happen, just, just remove that, just take that out. So we're not gonna tell it to on play, on start. Uh, we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep this active, but we don't want it to play on start. So now if we remove that and we hit play, now you'll see that it does not trigger on start, which is good. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna come back. So now inside of our script, I'll open that back up. In order to get a reference to the class of VFX or visual effects or um, whatever it's called. You need to go to the top. We need to access the library. This is just shorthand on how to do it. We'll type in Unity Engine dot VFX. You maybe start typing in visual or V and you see it. Okay, cool. And what this allows us to do, if we type in uh, visual effect, this will allow us to get a reference to that component that I showed you before. This. Um, <laughs> It's slower to hop in between uh, scripting and the newer versions. So if I go back here, um, this component right here, we want to reference to this component, right, as a class and tell it to play. Okay, so we'll go back to our script. So we need a reference to the visual effect we want to play. So the instance, our child. So I'm, I'm going to expose that with serialized field. Serialized field will show it in the inspector. Visual effect. And I like the underscore convention, so we'll just say, what do we want? We want the explode name object, or the explode effect. And if we save this and we come back into our scene, we let that update. If we click on exploder, we can see that our script is looking for a visual effect to use. We want to drag and drop, so click drag and drop. The, this child object, this is the component that, we'll, uh, that we want. So we wanna drag and drop that into our script. 
And that's always going to exist, right, as a child object. We have our reference, come back. We just need to tell it to play. So in this case, I'm just going to play it on start. But for you, you may want to play this on coin collect or on health is zero or whatever. Like, that's just how you could trigger it. So my example, I'm just going to say play particle, make my own custom. In case I want to add more code here, uh, void play particle. I like to separate out my start and update functions into more specific things. Just keep your code tidy. Uh, play particle, what do we want to do? We, I mean, it's pretty simple, really. We just want to say explode effect dot play. That's it. Right? On start, we want to explode effect that play. We wanted a sound effect. We could you know, combine that here. So we could call this play effects and we could play our sound effects and our VFX. Now, if we come here and we save it and we hit play, on start, we're playing our particle effect. So that's, that's how you can trigger it, uh, trigger the new VFX particle with their, their new system. I want to show you one last thing. Let's say you wanted to try the second option of the create destroy. I think object pooling, the third option is gonna be way too complex for this video. So this is all you need in order to get this working. But let's say you wanted to try the create destroy. I'll just show you as an example on how to do that. Uh, but this is all you need to get this working. In the create destroy option, remember this, is, this does not exist in the scene already. So I'm just going to disable this just so we don't confuse our two options. But if you had this enabled and you use what we just did, this is all you need, you're, you're done with the video. But let's say you wanna create and destroy something at runtime. So like a, um, ooh, like an impact effect, uh, like the player is hit with something or the uh, bullet hits the wall or whatever, then you may wanna create and destroy that. You could play it as a child object, but it's a little bit more complex. So in this case, we don't, we don't want a reference to our child object. We want a reference to a prefab that we want to spawn. So in this case, we want a prefab to spawn. Um, we already have our prefab, so we could do exploder. Let's go back into our script. Call this. We still want a visual effect. We'll call this um, burst prefab. I'm, I like to put the word prefab just because I want to really define uh, what I'm looking for here, help the designer out a little bit. And I'm going to comment this out so that we don't accidentally play it. And I'm going to do a new one. I'll call this spawn particle. Again, this is just to show you how you can do it. Spawn particle. Okay, so again, you could use this if you want. We're just gonna comment this out. And for our spawn particle, what do we need to do? Now, let, let's think through this first, uh, do pseudocode. We want to instantiate a new particle, play the particle, because it may not play by default, we don't know. And then we want to destroy the particle. And I'll leave these comments here. I'll, I think a lot of this is self-explanatory. Just to show the steps, it's good to think through step-by-step step what you wanna do first and then add the syntax and, and the code. So to spawn the particle, um, we, we want to remember that it's a type of visual effect whenever we instantiate it because we wanna do more things with that. So visual effect, new first effect is equal to, and then we want to instantiate it. If you're lost on instantiation, uh, you can look up more tutorials on what all this means. But basically we need an object to instantiate. So that's our prefab. So we'll just underscore burst prefab. And then we want to tell it where. So we'll just say at the same location as this object. So the same position as this object and the same rotation as this object, if it matters. Like if we're shooting out a, I don't know, if we're shooting out a burst in a, in a straight, cone or something. Now that we have created this thing, now you could just create it, but because we are holding on to it in a local variable, we can use this local variable and tell it to play, right? Because we are hanging on to this thing that we just created. See how it highlights there? Tell it to play, and that should make it play. And then finally, um, I don't know if it's just that uh, VFX is, or the VFX graph is new, 
I could not find a way to get the lifetime of the particle. Like maybe I can get the properties somehow. Um, I haven't experimented with that yet. So maybe there's a better way to do this. But just for prototyping, just to show you, I'm going to keep this simple. Um, destroy after yeah new burst effect. We just want to destroy the new game object that we created, right? Not just the component, but the whole game object that it's attached to. I'm going to destroy that. I'm just going to give it a random time, um, 1.5 seconds. Again, there may be a way that you can get the lifetime from that particle, but I just have not looked into that yet. So um, if you know a better way, like a more modular way, please leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, I would I would love to know that. But I'm just going to hard code it just so you can see because this is kind of a side example anyways if you want to do create destroy. But what this should do is it should spawn the particle, play it, and then destroy it after one and a half seconds. Again, ideally you'd wanna get the lifetime from the particle, but for now we'll just hard code it, We're just prototyping anyways. Save it, come back. Now first we need to give it our prefab, so our particle burst prefab. And it's different than what we're doing here, right? We should see this getting spawned into the scene separately. So if I hit play, see how it bursts there? And you see how it destroyed it after one and a half seconds? That's another thing you could do. Just really simply, you could just spawn these in the scene and then destroy them. Um, so two different ways that you could do your burst effect. But the key here is that we, we have made it modular. We can come in here and we can change the, the mask, the size, the color, the whatever. And hopefully you can use this when you're prototyping in your projects. It is well worth your time to create a few simple effects that you can use and reuse in your projects for just testing gameplay stuff, seeing your visual feedback. It just makes it feel so much cooler whenever you explode when you're out of uh, <clears throat> when you're out of health rather than just like disappear. It just doesn't have the same feeling and weight. And I recommend doing something similar with sound effects. Like just get some generic sound effects and uh, be able to trigger some prototype sounds when you do it. But Anyways, hope you enjoyed this, um, kind of a newer system, but I wanted to show you how you could do a similar burst effect that's more modular uh, with their new VFX graph system, because I don't know when the old particle system is gonna get phased out. You know, it could be phased out by, you know, by the time you're watching this, I don't really know, but I still wanna show you how to do a burst effect with their new system. So hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more videos.